All right, Brian, why don't you tell us about uh, your project? All right, well, I'm Brian, as Justin just said, and I'm going to do a quick demo of the Space Bubble Marines Automated Beverage Dispensing System. So the first step to use a system is to get registered into our user database. You can do that with the Colorado's driver's license. So first you have to swipe a magnetic card reader over here, and you can see my information pops up in our GUI. So since I'm not yet in the database, I'll add my stuff. Uh, I want to use that printer, so now that I want to go get a drink, I walk over to our beverage dispensing system yeah. with a cup, yeah. and I place it under the spout, and you can see it detects a cup. I select what size drink I want. I'm going to go six ounces of Kool-Aid for now because I'm not too thirsty. I'm going to swipe my ID, and it's going to pour me a drink. Now, some nice features are, if there is no cup detected, and you swipe, it won't pour you a drink. And if for some reason you hit 60 ounces, and obviously this is not 60 ounces, and I swipe, and I realize, oh crap, it's going to overflow, I just hit the cancel button, and it will immediately stop pouring me a drink. Now, if I walk back over to our GUI, obviously we need to keep track of these drinks, because what's the point? And I swipe my card again. It'll say I now have three drinks. So that's kind of our system in a nutshell. Uh, just a quick overview of it. Right, why don't you tell us about the uh, things on the left of the Geary as well? Uh, yeah. So we're also keeping track of a couple environmental variables. We're keeping track of the temperature inside of our fridge, so really that correlates to the temperature of our beverage. We're keeping track of the pressure of our beverage. Uh, we're keeping track how much volume of the beverage is remaining, so you know when it's about to run out. And then finally, we're keeping track of the volume, or the mass, I guess, of CO2 that's remaining, so you know when you're running low CO of CO2 and you need to replace it. Um, that way you never have any issues with just running out and you weren't expecting it. You're always forewarned here. And of course, this can always be integrated to, to a Twitter account or to send you a text message uh, when any of these things are out of whack. Obviously right now, since we just turned on our fridge, you can see it's 74 degrees inside. We have our set temperature 62, so it needs to run for a little bit to get down to our set temperature, um, and that's why it's red. But once it gets down there, if I change the temperature actually up a little more, you can see now it's you know within a few degrees, so it doesn't see a problem, and it should turn the fridge off. Well, do you want to show us how all this works inside? Sure. Brief overview inside of the fridge. Surely. So we're just using a kegerator that's been converted basically, because um, that's the cheapest and easiest way to do this. We're actually running two separate boards right now. Uh, this bare copper board is just running some ambient lighting up top. Uh, it doesn't take any commands from this board, it's just attached to get power from it. And the way we get powering this board is just through a 12 volt wall board here that goes up into the light socket in the fridge, if you want to take a look at that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we took the light out and plugged that in. And in the back right corner, you can see where the temperature control used to be. We put in a 120 volt AC relay, and you can see it's on right now because we have to turn the temperature and make it cooler, uh, which is the LED there. Um, so our board here is a MSP 430 24F10. Um, pick that because it's cheap, compiler's free, and we had a JTAG debugger to use for it as well. Uh, we're using Zigbee Wireless that's encrypted to communicate from our uh, beverage dispensing unit to our PC software and back. Uh, and that works well because it's low power, low rain, uh, sorry, it doesn't need a lot of power, it doesn't have to go very far, so the range works well. Um, to control the flow, we have a 12 volt solenoid valve, which is right here. And that's just a simple DC voltage on or off. This here is the flow meter that we're using to control uh, the beverage dispensing and also keep track of how much beverage is remaining in the unit. And that works simply by sending out pulses. Um, inside there is a turbine that spins and breaks an IR LED and every time that occurs it sends out a pulse. And that pulse is correlated to a certain amount of volume. So we simply count the pulses and we can calculate how much volume has been expended in a single pour or over the lifetime of the system. And then also on the board, um, over here we have our temperature sensor. 
we have a couple buttons which are the same as the buttons on the outside. They're just on the board for testing purposes. And a couple debug LEDs. Uh, that LED second from the left is for determining that the wireless is working, that it's getting acknowledgments. Uh, you can probably see it turns off every once in a while and then turns back on once it receives an acknowledgement of the received data. Um, and then this serial port here runs outside to our other card reader to, that we use to verify customers and keep track of who is actually getting a beverage. So that's pretty much our board. Um, it's a two-layer board. Everything's populated on one side for ease of debugging, so it could be a lot smaller. And also if we used connectors that weren't giant 100 mil connectors, um, that weren't screw terminals, you could also make this board a lot smaller, a lot more compact, and fit it into an actual fridge. So that's pretty much our semester, our capstone design project of the Space Wolverines.